When Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, seeing the city, he wept over it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear faithful, today's gospel begins with this heartbreaking scene where we see our Lord Jesus Christ weeping over Jerusalem. So we can ask, why these tears? Why our Lord is crying? Jesus saw in the same time, at the same time, the resistance to grace of Jerusalem, which did not want to receive its Savior, as well as the tragic future of this city, destroyed in the year 70 by the Emperor Titus. So he says, The day shall come upon thee, and thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and straighten thee on every side, and bid thee flat to the ground. And they shall not leave in thee a stone upon a stone. And we know, history tells us that the prophecy of our Lord was fulfilled to the letter. But Origen, the father of the church, Origen, also gives us a spiritual interpretation of Jesus' tears. I do not deny, says Origen, then that the former Jerusalem was destroyed because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. But I ask whether the weeping might not perhaps concern this, your spiritual Jerusalem. And what is our spiritual Jerusalem, my dear faithful? This is our soul. This is a spiritual Jerusalem for which origin is concerned. Because our soul, like the holy city, is called to receive salvation, to receive our Lord Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, it can do, as the earthly Jerusalem did 2,000 years ago, it can refuse its Savior and be obstinate against the grace of salvation. Now, you know, if we read today's gospel to the end, we see that Jesus' tears are immediately followed by another episode. Entering into the temple, he began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying to them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. A den of thieves. And it is not certainly not by chance, you know, that Jesus wanted to join these two episodes. The tears about Jerusalem and the exit of the, the seller in the, in the temple. He wanted to show us the cause of the hardening of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He wanted to show us the cause that is the abandonment of prayer and the lure of gain. Abandonment of prayer and lure of gain. And you know this is very important because St. Gregory the Great says that the temple of Jerusalem, the same as Jerusalem, is the image, the representation of our soul. So we can know which could be, could be the causes in us to the hardening of our soul. It would be the same that for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The lure of gain and the abandonment of prayer. Let's have a look to each of them. Firstly, the lure of gain. It is the unbridled search for money. The moderate attraction for the goods of this world. The fascination for all that is perishable, and we know perfectly that this is the mentality, the atmosphere in which we are living. Everything in money, 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 material, perishable, it is the only thing that matters. And because of the lure of gain, 
the soul only gives importance to what is material, what pays. It despises spiritual goods and values such as virtue, wisdom, heart, generosity. No. The only thing that matters is what pays. Profitability. And you know, this inclination to, to, to what is material causes in the soul a hardening, an extremely powerful obstacle to grace. In this sense, Saint Paul says to Timothy, Radix enim omnium malorum est cupiditas, greed is the root of all evil. This is very interesting. The lure of gain, the greed, is the root of all evil, of the hardening of the soul. Now the second cause and manifestation of the hardening of the soul is the abandonment of prayer. They were selling things in the temple and, by the way, obviously, living prayer. Instead of praying, they were selling. Lure of the gain instead of prayer. And the lack of prayer in our soul infallibly causes a dullness, a heaviness. Any spiritual effort becomes difficult for the soul. And little by little, vices enter the soul like thieves in a cave. Let us listen to some words of Saint Alphonsus on the necessity of prayer. As sap, says Saint Alphonsus, is necessary for plants to live and not to dry up, so says Saint John Chrysostom, prayer is necessary for our salvation. The same saint says Saint John Chrysostom, says elsewhere, as the soul gives life to the body, so prayer keeps the soul alive. Just as the body cannot live without the soul, so without prayer the soul is dead and smells bad. It smells bad because he who neglects to recommend himself to God immediately begins to stink of sin. A strong expression. Consequence of the abandonment of prayer. The prayer is also called food for the soul, because the body cannot sustain itself without food. And in the same way, says St. Augustine, the soul cannot keep itself alive without prayer. Just as the body is nourished by the food, so man is nourished by prayer. All these comparisons, says St. Alphonsus, employed by the Holy Fathers, show the absolute necessity to pray in order to be saved. And this is vital, mighty faithful. We know it. The prayer, prayer life, the life of our soul. This is a, really the big deal of our life. If we pray, you know, the law of gain won't access our soul. We need to pray. This is vital. So, mighty faithful, may today's gospel help us to make our soul a house of prayer in which virtues of all kinds flourish. May it help us to avoid any excessive attraction to the things of this world, so that Jesus will never have to weep over our souls, and that he will receive us at the end of this life into this eternal happiness of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.